All right. Bright and early morning here at Sun and Fun 2023. And the biggest news of this season is this engine sitting in front of us. What is it, Dean? Well, it is the new announcement by Rotax on the 916. Uh, basically, the 916 is an upgrade from the 915 in a couple of ways. One is the uh, max horsepower goes from 141 up to 160 now for takeoff. Max continuous is now 137. And the TBO is now 2,000 hours. Nice. 2,000 hours is the other big thing other than the horsepower. So 160 horsepower and what was the continuous again? 137. 137. And that is after 5 minutes, 10 minutes? or yeah. The max power, basically all the Rotax engines, is limited to 5 minutes. 5,800 RPM for 5 minutes, 5,500 max continuous. Yes. Okay. And uh, what um, what else is, is like... Anything internally that's changed here? Do we know about this that's uh, they're releasing at this point? Or I am sure there are some things that they've changed internally in order to go to the 2,000-hour TBO, but they're being really tight-lipped about that. So even even you know the service centers in the in the United States, they're not sharing what those exactly are. Um, and and let's talk about the exterior then. Is there anything we can we can talk about on the outside that looks different from the 915, the 916 that says ah? This is why we've got more power. Is it the same turbo? Is it the same intake? What? Well, right. It, it, it's externally the only thing that you're going to see different is going to be <clears throat> the color for the, the covers because uh, they're different engine models. Like They like to do that so you can ID them. Um, and they've got an after muffler now. It'll be interesting to see what that sounds like. I haven't, haven't experienced that myself. But other than that, externally, unless you know what you're looking at, you would not know the difference because literally other than the, the changes that they've made to make the whole system more robust, the only difference between the 915 and the 916 is the programming in the ECU. And they just run at a higher boost um, to, to get the extra horsepower. Well, maybe it's uh, it's in the after muffler. Is that going to be a, trade, a trademark yeah. name? The after muffler, like an afterburner? Y yeah, I don't think is that's that a, Is that a Dean yeah, thing? I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call it a Dean thing. Oh, okay, okay, no thanks. I like it though. I like it though. The, a the after muffler. <laughs> well, it's it's a good looking engine. Obviously, Rotax has uh, been very popular and a, a a good engine choice for a lot of light sport aircraft because we have we're very limited on weight, right? Uh, above right. other certified aircraft, we, we're very very lightweight. So this is a great option for so many airframes. And it just, there's a lot of excitement here. Over after they made the announcement on Tuesday, we've just been mobbed here with, with people wanting to know more about the engine and excited about it. And, uh, of course, you know how popular th things like the, the, um, the Carbon Cub and the Highlander and the Kit Fox and all those guys that are doing the, the drag stole and the, the Rans S21s and stuff like that, they're really excited about this engine. So. I was going to say, what... what uh have you seen or anybody calling about like airframers wanting to put this like OEMs so far? Yeah, those. I mean, those key ones that I just listed. Those are the the big ones that are going to be after it, and because uh, they're going to have customers just driving them to it. So yeah, yeah. Well, let's switch gears and talk just for a second about um, maintenance. I understand that you do a lot of classes down in um, Sebring and Lockwood, and you travel. Uh, what, what does that look like and how do people get involved in taking classes to learn how to work on these even as, a, as an owner or even um, commercially? Right. Okay, yeah. You can, you can call down at Lockwood, 863-655-5100. Uh, uh, talk to anybody there. They'll be able to tell you about it. We do classes uh, at least 12 times a year. Uh, we don't do it in July and December for obvious reasons, but uh, there are some other months where we do two a month. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a week long if you're doing all the training. Um, and a week long. Well, yeah, you got there's a two day service training, two day maintenance training, and then Fridays are dedicated to the engine management system on the injected engines because it's it's different and it's a little more complex. We spend a whole day talking just about that. So that program will that be somebody for like me who's just an owner? Or is that a full on commercial like AMP slash mechanic add on or it it for the the owners just purely operator owners will typically do the two day service. Some of them want more information from the maintenance training. Uh, a and P's, I mean, just like basically all of them do service and maintenance. And then as far as the A and P's or the LSRM's, um, it, it kind of depends upon what kind of business they're doing, uh, whether or not they're doing injected en or have any clientele with the injected engines at this point determines whether they come for the fifth day during the week. 
Okay. And I'm sure the prices change throughout the year, but on an average cost, what is a two-day course versus the full week course? The the two-day classes are six ninety-five each, and then the one-day course is three sixty-five. I believe it is. Yeah. And it, it it's on our website. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, thanks for the the quick tour. No, we don't have like I said a whole lot of new information other than here's the horsepower. Exactly. Buy it and put it on your airplane. But right. Yeah, no, it, it's neat and it's exciting. Um, we don't have a lot more details yet, but uh, it'll be exciting to see air, people getting them in airplanes and, and see what they're doing out in the field with them. Yeah. Well, here's a good question for you. Does this particular model come already ready and prepared to, to use a constant speed prop, or is there another model beyond this for that? They do. Actually, they come automatically. I mean, you can order it either way, okay. um, but they come uh, automatically from the factory in what they call a Series 3 gearbox, which is set up for a governor and a constant speed propeller. Uh, but when you order it from Lockwood or Leaf or Motivero or whoever you're ordering it from, you can order it reconfigured for a Series 2, which would be for a fixed pitch propeller. Uh, and that's the way you would order it if, like, you're going to do an Airmaster or something like that, an electric prop. Okay, so they're already, they're already factoring in that if you're getting a turbo, you're going to want to utilize all that power by having a constant speed prop. So that's a standard. M most people will need a variable pitch propeller to take advantage of the horsepower up high, yes. Now, some of them, like the gyro folks, they just want the horsepower, period. They're not worried about going over 10,000 feet. But, yeah, for those who are going to be going to Idaho or, you know, whatever... Idaho. Yeah, then, then they're going to need a variable pitch uh, propeller to take advantage of, of the horsepower up high. Right. right. Okay. Well, thanks again for the quick tour. Sure. No problem. Have fun. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at aviatorsclinic.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at flyfoxtrot95.com. Edge Performance at edgeperformance.no. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more.